Hey guys, welcome to another vlog. I am currently vlogging to you or coming to you from Barcelona, Barcelona, Spain. My husband and I celebrated our 10 year wedding anniversary in June of this year, 2023. And my son was really young at the time. If you know, uh, I, I have a daughter who's four and a son, but he didn't turn one until August 2nd. So we put off our trip and we are going now in November to Barcelona. Barcelona is a place that I actually have been to before. My husband and I did uh, a trip to London, Paris, and Barcelona back in 2017. And when we left Paris and got to Barcelona, I got sick. So I did not get to enjoy our trip very much. So we are doing a redo and we are starting here in Barcelona and then we are going to go to Lisbon, Portugal. And I thought that I would go ahead and vlog it for you. Uh, I just thought it would be fun. You know, I don't know. I don't vlog too much. I'm probably not the best vlogger to be honest, but I do have this little journal that I have been keeping since 2014, since Steve and I started traveling internationally and it was gifted to me from a girlfriend. And I thought, you know what? I am still keeping the journal, but I think that it is so cool to kind of vlog this, you know, for myself too, for my husband and I, and to show our kids when we get older. Um, and so I thought that it would be fun and I would take you guys along for the ride. So you can also check me out on Instagram at Kbella Beauty because I don't know that I'm putting too much on my stories, but I'm definitely going to create some reels. And I think I will put the reels in a travel folder, but we did already finish our first day. I'm going to go ahead and insert some clips while I'm talking of our first day because I didn't do too much talking. We actually flew out Saturday. We left Saturday at uh, 1045 our time in Houston, Texas in the morning connected in Atlanta. And then our flight was from Atlanta to Barcelona. We flew out of Atlanta, I want to say around 5.45 p.m. Saturday evening. And because of the time change, I'm pretty sure it's seven hours ahead here in Barcelona. So because of the time change, we landed Sunday, November 19th at I want to say like eight o'clock in the morning. It took us like an hour to get through customs. Steve had a private car waiting to pick us up. We stayed at the place that we are at now. It's called the Radisson 1882, I think is what it says. It's a really nice hotel. We're only staying here for one night uh, because this hotel is close to La Sagrada Familia, which is something that I did not get to see last time I was here because I got sick. So we arrived here to our hotel about 1030. We couldn't check in yet, but we dropped off our bags because we had a full day private tour starting at noon. And it was amazing. Steve didn't even realize that it was a private tour. I'm going to go ahead and list them down below. Our tour guide, Jennifer, was amazing. She's actually Costa Rican, living in Barcelona now. And so she took us on the tour. It was a private tour, a walking tour, a ton of walking, but it was really, really awesome. We actually started, we met her at this statue of Frederick Soler. And it's right in front of his monument. He has like a statue there. We met her there. And immediately she took us on a tour. We got to see so many cool places. We were following uh, Gaudi, Antonio Gaudi. Uh, he is a famous like sculptor, artist. Um, he is the one who, you know, was working on La Sagrada Familia, which is not even done yet. But she was basically showing us about his work. So we started in Placa Real. It's like the, they're, their little squares, I guess, the Royal Square. And she was talking to us about, um, that was how he started. And she went into detail about the two, uh, lanterns. Is that what they're called? Lanterns? The two lanterns that are in the square. And then she showed us La Rambla, which is like the, this long street that leads from the water all the way down. And La Rambla, she said, is a huge, like a huge tourist trap. There's a ton of food. There's a ton of shops. She said that it used to be like the bougie area for the ritzy people and that uh, the girls would come down in their fancy dresses and try to catch a man. But now it's like a big tourist trap. We want, we were supposed to go to park, uh, how did she say it? 
Parkwell, Parkwell. It's spelled G-U-E-L-L, -L, but she was pronouncing it Parkwell, but we did not go to the park. So instead we went to the palace well. And the well was a rich family who hired Gaudi to build their house for them. So we got to see the palace well, which was really amazing. And they were Freemasons, so they didn't really want people knowing you know, who was coming to their house. So they had these huge entrances, but it could open up and the horse and carriage could go inside right? and they would go downstairs so that you couldn't, uh, you couldn't tell who was at their house, the Well family. So that was one of the first places that we went to. We also did a ton of walking in the Gothic area, which was the area that I was able to see when we were here the first time. I remember walking through the Gothic area, but we got to walk through again and we saw so many cool shops. Tomorrow we have a free day. So I really want to go back to some of the shops and do a little bit of shopping. We also saw, saw a few churches. Um, I know one that was written on the travel guide is the Santa Maria del Pai. Is that the one that got bombed? The Santa Maria? Yes. Okay. So there was, that was the one where it was in Death Square, right? Yes. I feel okay. Like so it, it's the Spanish term. So it was something Placa de Muerte maybe. And so they called it Death Square because there's a church there uh, and a school there. And during their civil war, there was a bomb that went off there. Um, and so you can still see it in the church. And I'll, if I, I don't know that I have footage of it, but I'll insert the picture of Steve and I there. Um, because we took a picture in front of it. We also got to see the kissing wall. We had lunch at this place called Four Cats, which was really, really cool. That was a place that Pablo Picasso visited. He, um, I think he just took coffee there. He drew art there. He did, she was actually telling us he started going to Four Cats when he was not well known. And so I guess he was a big drinker and she said that he would like trade people. He would uh, draw their portrait in exchange for drinks. So we got to eat there, which was amazing. Oh gosh, we had chicken. Chicken was really good. We also had um, this bread with tomato on it, which was really good. We had, what was it called? That cheese thing. Okay, I can't remember what it's called either. It was like a cheese dish, but there was beef inside of it. She said that it's something that they cook for holidays. And we also had, what were those little boudin ball things called? Yes. Croquettes. We also had croquettes. Cod. Steve had a Indeed. cod croquette. And is it croquette or croquet? Either way, Steve had one that was cod and I had one that was beef and it was really good. And so Steve had um, a blonde ale, which we are not beer drinkers, but it tasted very smooth. I thought it was a delicious beer in my personal opinion. And I had a wine, so that was nice. And then we went down their fancy road. I'm going to type in the name here because I don't know how to say it, but it reminded me of like, she said it's like their Champs-Élysées or their Rodeo Drive. And it's like the bougie area with all of the fancy stores. And on that strip is also um, Casa Badijo, I think is how she was saying it. That was the house that um, Gaudi built for himself, right? He lived in that one, she said? Yes. That was the house that he lived in for himself. Um, and so we got to see that. We wanna go back there because she said that right now in November, they're doing uh, light shows. And she showed us a video of the light show she went to and it looked really, really cool. And then from there, we ended at La Sagrada Familia, which is what I was most excited about since we didn't really get to see it last time. And it's amazing. It was, the construction started in 1926. And so they wanted to be finished 100 years later in 2026. But she was saying that they're not even on track to be done then, that they think that it will be done in 2033 is what they're projecting now, which who knows, but we got to see the outside architecture, which was amazing. We got to take a tour of the inside. Jennifer was awesome. I don't know if you're able to request her. I'm gonna have all of the information for our tour down below, but she was awesome. She was very descript. And like I said, it was a private tour. So it was just Steve and I and her. So anytime we wanted to stop and take pictures or when we wanted to eat, you know, it was very private, very personal and, like lunch was covered, our taxi was covered, Steve paid up front, 
and everything for the day was covered. We didn't have to pay for our food or anything. So it was awesome. We walked back. It is now a little after six and there, there was a Papa John's by our hotel. So we got some Papa John's because we are so tired and jet lagged from the time change. It is like, I want to say noon our time, but we've basically been up all night. We tried to sleep on the plane on the way here, but we're really tired. So we got some Papa John's at the top of the Radisson. There's a terrace and in the elevator. It actually says that there's a selfie area because you can see La Sagrada Familia. And I'm hoping that it'll all be lit up right now because it is nighttime. So we are about to go up there in just a minute and check it out. But I feel like tonight's probably going to be a pretty early night for us. We need to FaceTime our children, um, but then we're probably going to pass out. And so tomorrow we definitely want to do some shopping. We want to check out the market. I am looking for an ornament for my work ornament exchange, some gifts for friends, gifts for family, um, and eat breakfast and just kind of see what we want to see. And then we have another tour on Tuesday before we leave on Wednesday. So that is just a recap of our day one, but I will see you in the morning. Good morning. We slept in today, kind of. We woke up at like five in the morning. I think it was just before five. Steve was already awake. He woke up at three something because of the time change. We ended up both falling asleep around six, 6.30, and we thought we were gonna catch the breakfast at the hotel, which closed down at 10, but we missed it. And we checked out of one hotel and checked into another hotel. Now we're at Hotel Regina. We were at Hotel Regina back in 2017, and we had a corner balcony over there a huge room. We have a really nice room this time also with the balcony, but it is just how we remember it. Okay, well, we are here at the end of day two at Barcelona, and I thought that the way that I'll do the vlog is, you know, there's not really much talking while I'm walking around during the day, but I have like a lot of clips. So I figured you've probably already seen it with day one, but while I'm giving you like a little recap, I'll insert the clips that I have. So today was like a full day of walking. We switched hotels. Our first hotel was um, the Radisson, which was by La Sagrada Familia. And Steve booked that hotel because it was close for um, our walking tour. That was where it ended. So we stayed there one night with a plan to transfer to come back to Hotel Regina. And Hotel Regina is where we stayed when we were here in 2017. So we're in a different room. We have a balcony view, um, but we actually woke up because of the time change around like, I don't know, 6.30 or something this morning. I might've told you this already in the morning, but we ended up falling back to sleep. And so we checked out of our hotel at like noon and came over to our new hotel. So we just dropped our stuff off. We were able to check in right away. We were able to drop our bags in our room and then we just did like a full day of walking. We went down La Rambla again. We walked down the Gothic area. I was able to pick up some souvenirs. I got a little, um, a little French bulldog Barcelona magnet for myself. I got some gifts for my girlfriends. Um, I do uh, an ornament exchange at my school that I teach at. So I was able to find my ornament. We visited the market. The market was closed on Sundays. That's actually something that our tour guide told us yesterday is that a lot of things are closed on Sunday. They recognize it as the holy day. And so the market was closed. So we went to the market today. We were able to get my melon, which I have not tried yet. I'll try it in a minute to see if it is how I remember it, but we were able to pick up my melon. Um, we ate at a, we ate brunch. We, Steve looked up this brunch place and it was honestly the best brunch I've ever had. So I had a dirty chai to drink and Steve had a cappuccino. I ordered, they were the ricotta pancakes and there was like caramelized banana and fruits. It was so sweet and delicious. Steve got like a pulled pork eggs Benedict and it said that, that it was um, like a, a Australian Melbourne style restaurant. It was so good. So, so good. So that was one of our first stops when we left our hotel was to get some brunch. That was delicious. Um, and then I think we visited the market after we did some shopping, a lot of walking around. And for dinner tonight, we went to a Brazilian restaurant that our driver from the hotel told us about. And that was honestly 
the best mojito I've ever had in my life. I had a passion fruit mojito. It just tasted like straight passion fruit, but like super fresh. We had the fried cheese, which was delicious. We had um, another kind of cheese that had like uh, balsamic vinaigrette drizzled on top, which was delicious. We had um, picanha, the meat picanha, which we've had in the States when we go to uh, Chamagasha, which is a Brazilian restaurant that we love in Houston. But the food was so good. We walked down by the water and actually that Brazilian restaurant was down by the water. So we had seen it earlier today when we were walking down by the water, we stopped and got, I had to go to the restroom. So we stopped at like a little cafe and got some hot chocolate and Steve got another cappuccino and we had some churros. It was delicious. We got some beautiful shots on the water. There were people who created these sand castles that are so detailed. They had like water and fire. They were maintaining them. It was just amazing. We walked around at night. Um, and when we came back from dinner, we walked down La Rambla again. And, you know, we got to see Barcelona in the nighttime, which was really nice. We have to get up early tomorrow because we have a monastery tour. We thought that it was gonna be in the afternoon, but they're actually picking us up at eight in the morning. So it's 11 p.m. now. We are going to get some sleep and then take off and go to the monastery. So if I have any more clips to show you, I will show you clips from us randomly walking around, but also make sure you check my Instagram because I'm creating reels there also. So I'll see you for day three. Hey friends, so it is evening time here. I actually just woke up from a little nap, you know, went in Spain, take a siesta, woke up from a little nap, but this morning we woke up early and we went to a monastery on the mountain Montserrat. And so we got to take a tour of the monastery. We got to see the beautiful uh, like scenery on the mountain. The monastery does have, our tour guide said 50 monks living there. So what I'm gonna do is I just have a bunch of footage from the monastery. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert that so that y'all can see how beautiful the scenery was and everything. We got to go inside. The basilica was beautiful. We also rode this little thing. I'm gonna type in what the name is, but it looks like a train. He said that it was like an elevator, but sideways, and it went up the track. We rode on that, which was really cool. We we were there with, um, there were four couples total. It was us, a couple from Chicago, a couple from California, and a couple from Mexico. So it was really cool. I'm gonna insert some footage there, followed by us stumbling upon the Sephora that's in our building here. Um, they had a slide, a literal slide, to go down into the store. So I'm gonna insert that footage also, but we are headed off to dinner and I'll check in tonight before bed.
I'm about to do the craziest thing and literally slide into beauty. The Sephora is right down there and you slide into beauty. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh my gosh. That's the craziest thing ever. Oh my gosh. Oh, literally, literally slid into beauty. We made it to Lisbon. We just checked into our room. They had a room early, which is nice. Our flight was super early in the morning. We woke up at like four. We got a cab at almost five. We had to fly out at 7.20 was our flight. And so we are an hour behind in Lisbon than what we were in Barcelona. So it's, um, we landed around like eight something. Luckily our hotel had a room, so we just checked in. Beautiful hotel. Um, and we're gonna do a tuk tuk tour today. So I will be back in to check with you guys later. Good morning, I am getting ready. We are going on a tour today. It is Thursday, November something. It's Thanksgiving in the States, but obviously we are over here in Europe, so it is not Thanksgiving over here. Uh, but I didn't really get to 
talk too much in the vlog yesterday because we had a travel day, but then we also ended up booking a tuk-tuk tour in Lisbon. So we left Barcelona yesterday. This is all obviously like European time. It's different in the States because I think we're seven hours ahead of Houston. But yesterday we had to get up around four to leave for the airport, the Barcelona airport around five. And so I feel like our sleep has still been off a little bit. Like I know that I've been having a harder time falling asleep when it's nighttime over here. Um, and then we've been trying to get up early to do things. So I know that it's been a little different, getting used to the time change, a little less sleep. But we had to get up early for the airport. Luckily, it was just a two hour flight to get from Barcelona to Lisbon. Um, and then we came back in time an hour. So Lisbon is an hour behind Barcelona. So we got in yesterday to Lisbon around like, I want to say it was 8, 8.30 in the morning, something like that. So we essentially had the whole day. When we got here, we found a taxi. We took a taxi to our hotel. Our hotel is downtown in Barcelona. It's super duper nice. I will insert some video clips of the hotel here. But I mean, when we checked in, it was early. Obviously, check-in is not normally until um, around 3 o'clock. But they were able to get us a room right away, which was nice. Um, they walked our bags up to our room. The lady at the front that checked us in, like walked up to our room, showed us everything in our hotel room, which was really nice. We have a great view from the rooftop terrace up here. There's also a restaurant. I don't know if we're going to visit the restaurant. It looks, um, pretty fancy, uh, but there is a restaurant attached to our hotel, which is pretty cool also. And they have some nice views of the square and, there's a Christmas market. Well, there's probably a couple, but there's a Christmas market that's going on like right down the street from our hotel. And when I looked it up, it said that their Christmas market didn't start until November 30th. So I didn't think we were going to see it. But luckily, we were able to see the Christmas market. We walked around down there. They had a lot of, I didn't know what to expect, like if it was just going to be shopping. And I mean, they did have some shopping, like some of it was like jewelry and hats and purses uh, but then other parts were food and drinks so it was cool just to walk around down there we ended up doing a tuk tuk tour and i will list the information in my description box about the one that we used because it was awesome we had this tour guide philip and it was a private tuk tuk tour so it was just us and him which was really cool and so he showed us like the different landmarks in the city, which I thought was awesome. Um, but then we were able to go to this place called the XL Factory. I had never heard of it, but there's, um, I don't know if it was like a little coffee shop or something. And Steve was telling me that here in Portugal, they're known for their chocolate cake. And so we got a slice of chocolate cake while we were there in hot chocolate. The hot chocolate was super chocolatey. <laughs> A little too much for me, but the chocolate cake, surprisingly, I thought that it was going to be too rich, but we were both able to eat it. We thought that it was good. And neither one of us is like a huge fan of chocolate cake, but it was some really good chocolate cake. Philip, our Tuk Tuk Tour driver, also took us to this pastry place, which of course I will list down below to get their pastries. And he was saying that the particular one that he took us to, they are the only ones with that specific recipe. And so they're open like all the time, every day, Christmas, New Year's, every single day, because they're the only ones with the recipe. And so it was really cool on the first day to like see around the square, to see, you know, the traditional cake that they talk about and the pastry. I thought it was really awesome. We also had a really good breakfast. For breakfast, we went to this place called Caffeine. And it was almost like in a mall. It was a little bit of an outdoor mall and it was in the food court area. So we went down there and I tried the avocado toast, which had like poached eggs on top, which was really, really good. And Steve had a pancake, that pancake. Listen, that pancake was amazing. It had um, like peanut butter and it was super sweet. What else? Bacon? Bacon was on your pancake? Bacon. Bacon and peanut butter was on his pancake. It was... And fruit. And fruit. It was so good. And then, of course, we got, like, coffee and cappuccino. I had a fresh squeezed orange juice. 
their orange juice here. So in the States, you know, you get like Minute Maid orange juice or something. And it's sometimes from concentrate or with sugar added. This orange juice is literally fresh squeezed. Like they have a juicer, they take the orange, they put it in the machine and give you the juice. It's so fresh and delicious, like so good. And then for dinner after the Tuk Tuk tour, which was like four hours. So that took the majority of our day. Um, we got picked up in our hotel in the afternoon and then we went around the day with him, but we were back for dinner. And so for dinner, I really wanted the carbonara, which is Italian. I know we're not in Italy, but I wanted the carbonara. So Steve found us a restaurant where I had the carbonara, which was delicious. He had a calzone and he had prosciutto added to his calzone, which was so good. It was so good. So we had a good time. I felt like the Tuk Tuk tour really showed us like what the city has to offer. So today we have another tour, which I will tell you about later. I'll fill you in. I'll take some clips, upload the clips and everything. Um, but then Friday is like our chill day. Like we don't have anything specifically planned for Friday. So we'll kind of do maybe like a little bit more shopping, walking around, seeing what else we want to see that we haven't gotten to see yet. I know there's like some shops and stuff. It's really hilly around here. So you definitely are, we're like, we're going to get a calf workout. We're, we're getting a little workout here with our walking. There's hills everywhere, but they also have these, um, what are those little elevator things called? Huh? Funiculars. Those elevator things. Yeah, Funiculars. They have those because it's literally uphill, like a lot, a lot of hills. So they have funiculars in some areas. We might take one of those tomorrow. We'll see. You know, it's just whatever we decide. Do some shopping, get some gifts for people. We've gotten some art for ourselves. So I probably, um, I probably will not show you everything that we get because we're getting a lot of gifts for people. So some of it's going to be for Christmas. Some of it will be given at a later time. So I don't want to show you in case people are watching this video for the gifts. But that is what has been going on so far. We are in the last stretch home. We are having a great time. We're enjoying ourselves, but we definitely miss our kids. So we'll be excited to get back to them. But off to another tour and I will be back later to let you know how it went. Okay, we are taking a walk through the gardens. We are going to, the, there's Steve in the background, Palacio de Pena, and you have to walk through the garden so that's what we're doing now. The tour guide for the tour that we're on said that it's like a 30 minute walk. And then you walk through the palace and that's like 40 minutes. And then you come out the other side. So in the summer, it's probably beautiful. It's a little bit chilly now, but we are going to walk through the gardens, see what we can see. I'll of course insert our video footage. It's all uphill. It's all uphill, you can see. So that's why I'm like out of breath, but I'll insert the footage of us going through the garden to get to the palace, but that is what's happening right now. And we took an, an old school Mercedes to get here. I'll insert that clip also, but pretty cool. It's like a, maybe like an hour drive from Lisbon. We are in Sintra is what they call it. I'm keeping that in the vlog. What? Give me one of the pastries. I'm hungry. <laughs> okay, so we just got back to our room. I'm sitting on the floor <laughs> charging, charging my phone. That is what Steve was talking about. He didn't know that I hit record. <laughs> and apparently he's hungry and wants... How are they uh, when they're not warm? Still good? Good. Not as good as it would be. It's a day old, you know, but it's fine. It's fine. Beggars can be choosers. But I thought since we just got back from our tour that I would fill you in on how it went and insert some clips and such because we took a few clips there. So the company, Steve booked it through our Chase Rewards, but we found out that the company uh, that we went with was called Travel Lords. And so I'll have all of their information down below. And Steve ordered an old Mercedes. A Mercedes 300 classic diesel. A Mercedes 300 classic diesel. Historical one. A historical one. From the early 70s. From the early 70s. 
So, um, it was private, so it was just the two of us and our driver, Bruno. So, of course, Steve kept singing <laughs> from um, Encanto. How does it go? <clears throat> we don't talk about no, Bruno. I had to think about it for a second. Yeah, it I had to think about it for a second. So, our driver, driver Bruno, is Portuguese, and he was telling us that the company has only been open for like four months. It's brand new. And so they have that car, which takes people on private tours. And now they have a bus. And so it made sense that it's a new company because he did a great job. He did do a great job. So I'm going to have them listed down below. If you're in Portugal, if you're into classic cars and you want to take a ride, um, it was really cool. Uh, but there were a few things that I feel like maybe could have been tweaked along the way so we went to i'm guessing it's a city called sintra and he was actually from there which was cool because the roads are very windy and very narrow he was like oh this is a two-way street and i was like okay really because it's super narrow um so i felt comfortable knowing that he really knew the area but we went to a palace uh called the palace de pina and it it's up at the top of a mountain it's all the way up so we had to drive all the way up through the hills it was crazy um but the palace de pina and there's a gardens there and it was home to the king i know it was king ferdinand he mentioned um and there were a couple kings who lived in there um and a queen of course you can look up all of the history we got to tour it so we got to see all of that but you go up there and part of it is no driving so he had to drop us off at one area of the gardens and there was some issues with chase like i said steve booked through chase so it was nothing on the company travel lords end but there was some confusion when steve booked and not enough information on chase's end like they didn't have our contact information we didn't have their contact information so when bruno came to pick us up he was asking if we already had our tickets to the palace and Steve said no. And he was like, okay, well, uh, you know, my, my boss should have contacted you about that. And when Steve got a hold of them earlier, uh, we found out that he had been trying to message us, but we weren't getting any of the, any of the information because we were using a third party through Chase. Um, so Steve tried to buy tickets on the way there and we left at like nine in the morning the, there was one ticket available for 11.30, one ticket available for 12.30. And Bruno was like, well, they're really strict, but when we get there, you can talk to them and see. So he drops us off at the gardens and it's a 30 minute walk to the palace. Um, so when we get there, we're talking to the guard there that lets us in and he shows us a ticket station and there are a ton of tickets there. But because again, Steve tried to book it through a third party, we couldn't see all of the tickets available. So that was something, I mean, because we're traveling in November, I think it would have been totally fine if we had gotten there and then purchased our tickets. But if you're thinking of high season, like if you're coming in the summer, this is probably something that you would want to do days in advance. Because we got there, we already had our tickets, we walked 30 minutes through the garden, which mind you is all uphill. Okay, you need to be in shape. It's all uphill. Very, very beautiful. I was pretty cold. Were you cold, Steve? Yeah, it's pretty cold. Okay, we were both pretty cold. Um, and it's beautiful, but it's all uphill. And we found out that there's a hop on hop off bus there that we didn't know because the gardens are huge. So you walk through this one path, we walk 30 minutes, we get there to the top of, of where the palace is about 1030 ish. And you can see the outside of the palace just for walking through the garden. And the outside of the palace was beautiful. We took a bunch of pictures. We saw some scenery. There was a shop there. We picked up a few things. But when we go to the top around 1030, we show the guy our ticket and we say we have one for 1130, one for 12. And he was like, no, you have to come at your exact time. So he sent us back down and we were able to buy new tickets, correct our tickets for the proper time, which again, I think we could only do because it's November. I don't think that's something that you could do, you know, ahead of time. I think if you're coming to the palace, maybe plan ahead, you know, book your tickets ahead of time, um, which again is no fault to Travel Lords either. They said they tried to reach out to us and we couldn't because of the chase system. But just know if you're going purchase your tickets ahead of time. We were able to buy tickets for 11 o'clock and then we went up um, to the palace. Do you have something to add? They're through Travel Advisor. Travel Advisor? Yeah. Is who Chase used? Yeah, so Chase Ultimate Awards uses Travel Advisor as the system to book through. But if you just go to Travel Advisor or Vider, you can just go right through and book them. 
Okay, they're and traveling. You won't have to worry about this problem. So yeah, you download the Viter app and then you may have to wait conversation. Okay, hopefully you heard all that. I'm sure you did. Mm -hmm. um, so there's our suggestion for that. Here's the thing about the inside of the palace. The outside was cool. Like you could go wherever you wanted. There's a restaurant, there's shops. We took beautiful pictures. When we go in and we've been to a few, like we went to um, palaces when we were in, in France and we've been to plenty of museums and we've toured all over, you know, different, different areas. Um, so we've been in castles and, and palaces and things. And normally you go in and when you're in, I mean, even in Spain, when we toured uh, Palace Well, you go in and you can go wherever you want, right? And you go wherever you want and you look at whatever you want. With this one, um, it's very structured and I found out why. You can only go in at your, at your exact time because there is a travel path. Everything is roped off and you have to travel through this path. And so I'll insert video clips so that you can see just how busy it was because at one point Steve turned to me and he was like, I feel like I can't even take any good photos because there's so many people. So normally when you go in and you're touring a palace or whatever, a castle, you know, you want to get pictures where you don't have a ton of people in them. But because of the nature of you had to travel a path and you could not deviate, everybody's going one way, you're all following the same path. It was packed. There were a lot of people. And so it did kind of mess up some of the photo opportunities because there's there's nowhere to go and you have to move forward. And if you don't like crowds, don't go. I mean, we went in November and it was crowded when we were going through. So I can imagine like peak times in the summer would be crazy. I would not recommend going. And so we went through and I mean, it was cool to see, but we got out to the end. We walk out and Steve's like, oh, is this it? Like, you know, there was no time to really look at things. You're just, you're following the people, right? Like herding cattle, we're the cattle going through. <clears throat> so we get out to the end and he was like, okay, well, that was kind of anticlimactic. Like you walk through it, now you're out again. Take more pictures of the outside. So it's cool to go to, but I feel like if you are going to Palace de Peña, if you don't like a lot of a crowds, a lot of people, maybe don't go inside. Go outside. It's really cool. The scenery is beautiful. Like, I'm glad that we went. But the inside was a little bit anticlimactic. Um, and we didn't have, like, an audio guide or a tour or anything. I think there was one there. So maybe if you're listening to that on the way, getting a little bit more history. Um, but then after that, so there were two entrances to the palace. One through the gardens, which we walked through the gardens. And they're huge. I mean, you could have done probably just a tour of the gardens and the outside of the palace but we walked through the gardens with a purpose to get to the castle and then there's a main entrance when you left the palace we went out the main entrance and we had to call bruno to come pick us up because he couldn't park there so that was fine he came and picked us up um and then this is kind of where I feel like you could tell that they were a little bit of a younger tour company because Bruno was very accommodating. He was like, you know, obviously we had an itinerary. There was an itinerary planned, um, but he was like, okay, there's some options here. Steve mentioned wanting to get some tiles because that's what they're known for here in Portugal. And we asked about going into the historical center. You cannot drive in there. So Bruno was like, in, you know, the plan was to go to the King's Lodge, his hunting lodge, and and have lunch there. He said, I can park there. I have a spot. We can go eat there. But if you want, you know, he's trying to accommodate us. If you want to go into the historical center, I can try and find a parking spot and we can go in there. Um, so I feel like because, you know, they are young, we, there was an itinerary, but he was kind of trying to accommodate us. So first we said, sure, let's go to the historical center. But then there was an issue with parking. So we ended up going to the King's Lodge, which the food was great. It was a positive um, atmosphere there, experience, I guess. But the other thing is, um, because they are a newer company, Bruno had mentioned that there weren't necessarily tours every day. Like they had some busy seasons and then they have some days where they don't have tours. Uh, cause it sounded like it was just the two vehicles, just the van and the Mercedes. Is that how you felt? Yeah. Just those two vehicles. Um, so he tried to call ahead, but he couldn't get a hold of the King's castle cause he was going to order ahead. Um, or the King's Lodge, I guess. Now it's a hotel. It's a boutique and hotel. So we get there, we parked, we go up there, and it appeared like they weren't expecting us. So we did have to wait a while. I mean, they 
talked to each other. They recognized Bruno. They came in. They accommodated us. They cooked us food and whatnot. But we were the only people there. Like, literally, there was a receptionist who let us in. And then the receptionist disappeared to, like, go. I don't know if he was prepared. It appeared like he was preparing our food because he didn't come back out. And then, like, a guest came. And so our guide had to go get the receptionist. They were very accommodating, very welcoming. They got us whatever we wanted. Um, but I feel like maybe... If they were a more established company, it would have been something where perhaps, you know, if they had a set time now, that would restrict us. If we had a set time, if he was like, because when we were at the palace, it was do whatever you want. Call me when you get out. But if, you know, it was more structured, if he had to get to the king's um, hunting lodge, you know, at one because they were expecting us for lunch, it would have given us a little bit more of a set schedule. Um but then we wouldn't have had to wait as long for them to prepare because it seemed like maybe they weren't expecting us. We didn't mind because Steve and I have the mindset of like, we're on vacation. We're not in a rush. So it wasn't a big deal. And we got to talk to Bruno a lot and get to know him, which I thought was uh, was pretty cool as well. Because when we do travel, we love talking to the locals and people who are in the community and hearing about that. So I feel like we got to hear more about his life in Portugal, which was awesome. Um, and then from there, we, again, he gave us an option um, but like, what do we know? We're not from Portugal, you know, and I had done no research. Steve did a little bit, but he asked us like, do you want to see more of the palaces or do you want to go to, I'm probably going to say it wrong, Kaiskais or Kashkais, something like that. It's the westernmost part of Europe. And there's this beautiful, uh, monument there, the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, really, really cool. So he gave us an option of what we wanted to do. Originally, the tour was for Kaiskais. So we said, let's go there. So he took us there, um, and it was a little ways out there. Uh, we were under the impression that maybe it was going to be a city and that we were going to walk through a city, but we, we didn't. We just went out, and it's there's a lighthouse, and there's the monument and the ocean, which was amazing to see. I'm really glad that we did that, um, but we were kind of thinking it was going to be a little bit more. But it was cool because... There was a shop there. Again, we did some more shopping. We had some coffee. We got to talk to Bruno a little bit more. Um, and then we came back. But it was a full day tour. We left at 9. He came to get us. And we got back a little after 5. So, full day. Really cool. I would definitely recommend them. They're new. They're starting up. Um, but I think it was cool, too, because he was very accommodating um, and took us around. It was cool to see things. It was cool. I'm glad we did not have to drive through Sintra because those hills, oh my gosh. Um, but it was pretty cool. It was pretty cold also, like cool, like cold. But it was a beautiful day. It was sunny. Bruno told us that it rains a lot over there in Sintra. So uh, we were happy not to have seen the rain. But now we are going to look for dinner and maybe walk around. And today's Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving. It doesn't feel like it because we're not celebrating, but we were able to just call the kids and see what they were up to. Um, but tomorrow we get to do whatever we want and it's our last day because we travel home on Saturday. But I feel like we saw a lot. I feel like we've been able to do so much in the city. You know, someone just knocked on our door, Steve. Turned on service. Probably turned on service. Yeah. Um, we're also staying at an amazing hotel. So I will have that listed down below, like top notch service. Home, we connect in Newark, but let me just tell you, 
if you ever fly out of the Lisbon airport, we saw so many people miss their flight because first you, it's a mess, okay? The layout is not very good. It's hard to find where we needed to go to find United to check our bag. We had to check one bag. So we check our bag and then you go through one area where you scan your boarding pass, okay? Then there's all these shops uh, or maybe we went through security first. You scan your boarding pass. There are a few shops and places to eat, but then you go through security, you know, where you pass through like in the States. And then there's duty free that you have to walk through. There's restaurants, there's places to shop, right? So you think you're good. Well, we decided we were just gonna walk to our gate. We always like to walk to our gate first and then to uh, figure out if we wanna eat or whatnot. So we go to walk to our gate. There's a whole nother line, the longest line that we had to go through and it's the passport check. And so we waited in the passport check for I wanna say every bit of almost an hour, 45 minutes. And there were people who were crying because they missed their flight. There were, was one lady in front of us who said she's already been at the airport three hours, but she had been shopping, had no idea she had to go through another line. I mean, we just made it in the nick of time. So Steve's using the restroom quick, and then we're gonna hop on the plane. We only have a two hour connection in Newark before we get to Houston, and they told us we have to get our bags. So we're hoping that it doesn't take too long to get through customs there, but that's the part that takes a long time is the passport check. So definitely a mess if you go to Portugal.